<laughs> hey guys, Clumsy here, and welcome back to ETS2. I decided to make another Q&A episode instead of a silent trucking one. I know, I guess I missed uh, talking with you guys. So here we are. And this time, we are in... Let me try to pronounce it. Oh my goodness, I'm going to butcher this. We're still in Croatia. We are in... Ploče? Ploče. I'm going to stick with that. And we're going to make our way towards Hungary in... Pitch. Something along those lines. Yeah, you, you get the point. You can see it. Nine tons of straw bales. We're going farming. And we'll be crossing over to Hungary at the end. But it's going to be 842 kilometers. So I'm guessing this will take two, maybe even three episodes. So hang tight. But yeah, that should be fun. Anyway, let's get started. Same, with, Still with the same truck. So why not? How can you wrong, go wrong with this truck, right? <clears throat> Let's go and do it. Now, I'm not sure. Should we be facing... I'm going to take a risk and say that we are going around from here. This is actually a very interesting prefab. Very different. I think I've only seen this like once or twice. This might be what some of the new prefabs from either the DLC, one of the DLCs, or maybe this is one of the pro mods made prefabs, because I remember that's a thing now, SES made it in a way that the map makers can actually make their own prefabs now, by combining different assets and stuff like that, and pro mods definitely took advantage of that now, alright, here we are, I'm hoping I got the right direction. Okay, I see the sign there. Uh, oh crap. Nope. Wrong one. Should be facing the other way. So it should supposedly be a lot easier than this one. Alright. No worries, no worries. We can manage it. So hope you guys are enjoying the chill trucking and the Q&A vibes. As always, if you have any questions or if you have more, like yeah, if you have a topic in mind which you want me to discuss over these episodes, let me know, okay? I'll be happy to include them and talk about them. <clears throat> Alright, now this should be... Right, this one. It's a bit floaty, I'm not sure why. That shouldn't be a problem though. Should be right smack in the middle of this one. Yes, maybe? No? Uh, hello? There we go. Alright. Beautiful sounds by EVR, as always. Let's do this. Nine tons of straw bales in this beautiful trailer. It's also a bit, a bit shameful in a way. It's a bit of a waste. But we'll take it. We'll take it. Ooh, should we pass by these very interesting... No, let's not. Let's try and get the most fuel econ econ economy as possible. So we'll not be doing a lot of stopovers, we'll be sticking to the main road and we'll see how much we can gather, right? There also seems to be a nice border there, which probably means this has been improved since the Baltic DLC got released. So it's one of the uh, recent updates in Pro Mods, basically. So that's good. But yeah, we might not reach it this episode. Let's reset the fuel economy might be in the next or maybe next next episode anyway so i'm actually recording this one right after the previous one because i am really enjoying driving through these uh, roads in croatia beautiful scenery wherever you look beautiful roads and with a beautiful rock truck and a beautiful audience <laughs> what more can i ask for anyway let us continue with the q a and maybe get distracted by beautiful bridges we see in front of us. Um, anyway, alright. Next question. Uh, we still have a lot from Jay. Thanks again, Jay. If you had the power to read someone's mind, 
whose would it be? Hmm, interesting. I, I, I thought this was going on a different direction. Like, what would you be thinking of? Or what would you look for? But whose would it be? Well, if it was possible, I would like to know whoever I was talking was... Uh, whoever I was talking to. I would like to know what they're thinking. So that I can prepare myself and arm myself. But that would be a bit cheaty, wouldn't it? But... Yeah, life is not that simple. <laughs> but, yeah, we can all hope. We can all think about it. If anyone's... If I could read anyone's mind, it would probably be Mrs. Clumsy's. <laughs> because you know what they say? Happy wife, happy life. And you never get to understand women 100%. Even though I kind of know Mrs. Clumsy for a bit already. I kind of know her. I can never know her 100%. And the more I know her, the more chances of uh, surviving I have. <laughs> that didn't come out well. No, the, the more chances of having a happy life I have because I can uh, serve her more. Uh, let's look at it that way. Man, this road looks very weird, huh? Like you have to make that insane U-turn on this road. But I guess it's not much of a highway, so it's not that strict. Uh, let's see. I, know, I can see nothing out of here. Yeah, see? Didn't even see that a bus was headed our way. But yeah, how do you make this work? Okay, and now he stops in front of me. I'm sure this guy would do the same. So let's give him some space here. Yeah, look at that. They are so confused as to what I'm doing. Oh, oh dang it! Oh, look at that uh, hitbox. Cheating. That should have been still good, right? What a cheaty hitbox that is. My estimates would have been correct there. Alright, anyway. Let's not put the blame on others. Or let's. Anyway, alright, Eddie Stobart. <laughs> cool. But yeah, I would love to know and understand Mrs. Clumsy 100%. Because that is something that if you are in a relationship right now, if you are married, if you have a significant other, then you know that knowing what they are thinking of is paramount to your life's happiness. <laughs> if, we, if we don't read them right, oh my goodness. Chaos would ensue, and uh, sometimes, especially women, women can think of very complex things for men, and men are very simple-minded beings, me included. So uh, sometimes it uh, is a challenge for me to understand what Mrs. Clumsy is thinking, and that is. A recipe for disaster. Sometimes I misinterpret completely and uh, if you thought that I would be missing this opportunity, you're wrong. I'll be taking that shot later. Beautiful. Beautiful bridge shot. Alright. Downhill. Nice. Let's just let gravity do its work for us and speed us up. Get a bit of uh, fuel economy in there. Improve our score. Right now we're at 54. But yeah, we haven't really traveled uh, so much yet. Beautiful train there. Alright. Let's just chill and get this. Be as economical as we can. But yes, truthfully, knowing what Mrs. Glumsy is thinking of would be such a great, great power. That's a superpower, if I could say it that way. But you, you kind of learn it through time, you know? You learn each other's quirks and uh, you kind of learn how to read each other. Non-verbal cues and stuff like that. But yeah, it, it requires time and effort and uh, constant communication. Zagreb. Oh my goodness, this looks even better, I think. 
sorry. This, yeah, this looks even better. Now, where are we going? Is it here or here? Uh, Zagreb. Uh, we're heading to Zagreb, not Ploče. That's because that's where we came from. So, this one is definitely going to be the thumbnail for this episode. Beautiful. Let's take that. Right, alright. Goodness. Oh, I love these kinds of highways. Like you're suspended. 100 feet above the ground like that. Just having magnificent views all throughout. Amazing sights here. Oh man, I love this place. And yeah, I've been hearing really good things about this place from uh, from a tourist point of view. Lots of amazing sights in Croatia. Very underrated, I think. Not as famous as the other places like, I don't know, France, Germany, you know, like Eiffel Tower, like the, the tourist hotspots. This is more like for the experts, I think. Those uh, traveler, uh, how do you say, travel junkies. And those who are going beyond the normal uh, stereotypes or normal, uh, how do you say that? The standard tourist destinations. The, these are the really scenic ones that are not as famous. My goodness, I can definitely understand now. Okay, let's go and stop here. Alright, next question. I'm reading through this and I'm wondering how I can answer this. What is the sexiest animal in the animal kingdom? <laughs> how the heck do you answer such a question? Man, Jay, you have such a creative mind. I would have never thought of that in a million years. Sexiest animal in the animal kingdom. I have no idea. Goodness. Well, uh, how do you begin to answer this? I guess all of them are sexy because they're all naked. <laughs> no. Maybe, I don't know, maybe cats in a way? Because like for women, you would normally attribute a uh, woman's uh, sexiness. Am I on the shoulder? I think I'm on the shoulder here. Let me move to the left. With their grace of movement and stuff so I would say maybe a cat or a feline one of the members of the feline family because they're very graceful and they're like very like they have any very graceful movements and such and usually that's what like the dancers try to emulate right of that kind of grace in movement so maybe cats I don't know that's the best I can manage with that question. <laughs> How about you guys? What's the, the sexiest animal for you? Oh my goodness. That's creative thinking right there. Alright, next question. <laughs> if you had a disease named after you, what would be the symptoms? Memory loss. <laughs> Memory loss? Uh, loss of... Uh, hand and eye coordination, you know, physical, uh, physical movements, wrong estimation of physical, uh, how do you call that, you know, like, you can't catch a ball, you can't grab something, yeah, that's probably, those are probably the main symptoms, maybe also uh, sore throat, loss of voice, so you usually have that, right, getting colds, those are the normal sicknesses that they get. And yeah, for sure, the, the number one, which I mentioned first, memory loss. Goldfish memory, that's the number one symptom of the clumsies. clumsy disease. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure I would like to think of it as a disease, though. I would rather think of it as my quirk as my weirdness so hopefully not a disease but yeah i get the question makes sense 
and those would be the symptoms if ever. Next question, do you think your childhood was better or worse than other people growing up in a similar place and time? This situation is for real in your country. Hmm. Let me see. Yeah, that's a very loaded question. I like it. Um, I would say I was very fortunate in my childhood. Like, in terms of uh, material things. Like, we were well off. Uh, both my parents are doctors. So we had enough means to get whatever we needed and maybe even to the point of what we wanted we were not rich like not super rich but we were able to buy things we wanted so we lived a comfortable lifestyle yeah so as a kid i did not get everything i wanted but i did get everything i needed and got lots of toys and lots of material stuff yeah <clears throat> that being said so in that way, materially, materialistically, I would say I was very fortunate. My childhood was very fortunate in that manner. Um, in some aspects though, I found it a bit, I don't know, maybe it's just the grass is greener on the other side. But I found myself not having much of a childhood. Like I thought, I, I think I grew up too fast. Or I wanted to grow up too fast, so I was always looking ahead and not enjoying being a kid. Which I guess is a normal thing for most kids. Kids wouldn't go normally go and say, oh, it's such a nice time being a kid. I love this. I wish I was a kid forever. I, don't, I haven't heard of anyone, any kid, commenting like that. All the kids I know would be like, Oh, I want to grow up. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to be tall. I want to be something like this. So it's probably not uh, the worst. Uh, I, I guess it's not a realistic thing to think of. Yeah, I wish I would have appreciated my childhood more. Savored it more. But... Yeah, I, I mean, also in some ways, I I thought I think, hmm, how do I uh, word this? Um, because my parents are both doctors, they are very busy, and so we didn't have so much. Well, we we kind of had family time, of course. Uh, we were a whole family, so I'm thankful for that. And my parents love each other very much. But we just didn't have so much uh, family time, I think, now that I look back, because we were all busy. When we were younger, my parents were both busy, and when we grew older, we were busy, or we thought we were busy. We didn't make time for our parents so much. So we didn't get to bond as much, unfortunately. So we don't have the, the closest relationships. You know, I would look at other people, and sometimes I would be envious with how close they are. And how much they depend on each other. You know, it's not it's not dependence. It's interdependence. It's it's being a family with each other. I think that's one thing that I'm really missing. Because I I grew up to be very independent. My as I mentioned, my parents were very busy, and I was doing quite well in at school on my own. So I didn't need to be tutored, or I, they didn't need to teach me with my homework. So I managed it on my own. So I kind of learned how to do things independently. And so I grew up to be very independent. And in some ways, that's good. But in some ways, that's also not so good. Because I did not um, foster my relationships with them so much. So we were not that close. And so I would look at other people and I would think, Oh man, I wish I had my family had like, that kind of relationship. I, I wish we were that close. And um, yeah, you just can't have it all, but of course you can not stop wishing for stuff like that. But yeah, in terms of my childhood, I would, I would have thought, um, I would have hoped for a closer relationship with my family. Oh my goodness, it's a beautiful looking pool. <laughs> that looks like a swimming pool with a color. That's amazing. I guess that's real life, huh? I think I've seen pictures like that from other tourists. 
the waters being that clean. So much so that it looks like a swimming pool filled with uh, chlorine or something. Man, that's nice. And those clouds are beautiful. Granted, looks like it's going to, to rain soon, but man, that lighting, right? Beautiful. Thank you, Natural Lux. Anyway, so, yeah, childhood, I found it a bit wanting, but yeah, that's maybe that's just me um, enjoying the grass on the greener side, as they say. Yeah, I'm thankful for my childhood, and I wouldn't have... Maybe I would have tried to... Uh, maybe I can still do that. Yeah, I can still do that. That's something I can still work on. I mean, even though we kind of didn't become too close when I was a kid, I mean, I can make up for that and uh, become closer with my dad and my brother. My mom has passed away already, unfortunately. So, didn't get the chance there, but... Uh, it's not too late. Family comes first always. You know what they say, right? Like, um, uh, people who are interviewed on their deathbeds, no one says, like, oh, I wish I worked harder. I wish I spent more hours in the office. It's always, oh, I wish I spent more time with family. I wish I did this and did, did that, that with my family. It's always about family and friends. But yeah, sometimes you don't really give them so much like priority. And it's a bit ironic because we know that they're the most important. But in a normal day, we tend to skip over them. Uh, I'm reading this book right now, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. One of the best books out there, one of the most iconic. And I can't believe I'm just reading it now. And there is a, a statement there. We tend to be, one of the habits is to always start with the end in mind, yeah, like, think of your goal, think of you want to achieve, think of you want to have, and work backwards from there. So if your goal is to have a great family, then maybe every step that you take should be a step towards that goal. So maybe you should make it be making more effort to spending more time with the family and stuff like that, right? And that's a very good thing to, to, to take note of. But yeah, he mentions that, um, the author mentions that it's a bit tricky because we tend to be stuck in the thick of thin things. I think he said it along those lines. So becoming busy with the not so important stuff tends to be very distracting like we are our lives are filled with all these important and urgent matters that are not really that urgent or maybe they are urgent but they're not really that important at least not as important as our core goals and that's something i'm still working on and i think it's a very common problem we have to find ways to uh, really spend more time and uh, focus you know live with intention and stuff like that anyway those are my two cents if you are able to relate with that concept somehow let me know but i guess if you are on the younger side if you're still studying i wouldn't be surprised if your number one goal is to get out of the house <laughs> because we we live in stages you know you you when you're studying, you're growing up, you want to be independent, you want to maybe live on your own, move away from the family because they're suffocating, they always they give you curfew, they restrict your uh, mobility, they prevent you from doing things, and I definitely encountered those same things before. And yeah, I had the same thoughts, that's why I went to a different country in the first place, because I wanted to live on my own. I wanted to be with them from time to time, but I wanted uh, overall to live my own life and not be limited. So that's one of the main reasons that I went to Singapore. One is the career opportunities and the other is uh, freedom, you know, and I love it. But yeah, at the end of the day, we'll be going back to the family and uh, 
yeah, after that phase, I started realizing, wait a minute, family is my number one priority. So it tends to be, we tend to live in stages. There's a rebellious stage, a stage where you want to be independent, and when you start growing up again, growing older and older, you start appreciating your family more. Oh crap, going too fast. And uh, this is not an 80 kilometer road. Maybe a 70 at most. There we go. It's beautiful though. Beautiful highways and beautiful bends. So yeah, I'm, that, I'm at that stage now where I am past the rebellious stage and I'm realizing again that family is number one. So even though that I now have my own family with Mrs. Clumsy, we don't have kids yet, but I mean, family is with a wife, right? Our own family. Still, my family of origin, my dad, my brother, is just also important. So I have to take that into account. So hopefully you guys have that same realization. Or if you think of it differently, let me know in the comments. It would be interesting to find a different take on it. Or it would be even more interesting to, to find more people relating to it. But yes, don't worry if you're at that stage in your life where you just want to be alone and be left alone, you know. I totally understand. Okay, I go, I've gone through the same things. And yeah, don't hate yourself for it. Because that's just part of the being... It's just part of growing up. You have to... Uh, I, don't, I don't remember the, the, the saying, but... You have to set out on your own and live your own life and then once you are once you have that set up then you can look, look back again and uh, get back re-foster rekindle the relationships with your family just don't burn any bridges along the way yeah try not to burn any bridges because <laughs> you'll need to come back to it after a while and don't burn bridges because bridges are beautiful. You should never burn bridges. That's clumsy wisdom right there. <laughs> Taken from a bridge lover like me. G Traffic 3 is such a nice thing. Not bad on the frames and uh, actually very nice on the road. Looks more lived in, looks more realistic. I think I'll be keeping this G Traffic 3. Alright, but thank you for that amazing question, Jay. Those are the ones I really like to answer because it helps me ponder and uh, dig deep. Let's move on to the next one. Just go past this pen so I can look at my screen. Um, what's the dumbest rule you've been forced to follow? <laughs> okay, um, hmm, interesting. Yeah, I can probably answer this question and then we'll uh, move on to, we'll uh, uh, take a break and continue next episode. What's the dumbest rule you've been forced to follow? That's very interesting and very much in line with the growing up and having rules, right? Now, I grew up in a very Filipino family. And uh, in the Philippines, we are a third world country. Right, so we have some practices which are attributed to scarcity. Like my, my parents grew up, um, can we classify them as poor? Yeah, I guess they grew up poor and then they worked hard to, uh, to uh, rise up and uh, provide for our family. Oh, look at that mileage. Goodness, that is amazing. Less than 30. It's dark. So yeah, but yes, uh, so we have some rules, we have some practices which are based on the scarcity mindset and I can definitely understand where it comes from because growing up in a, uh, in a culture, in a, in a family that was uh, 
ha that had very scarce resources, you really need to uh, make the most out of everything. And it came in the form of food, for example. Food is something that was scarce before for my family, for my parents. My dad would tell stories like how they had to they were there were they they were three in the family, my dad's side. And uh, he would tell stories on how they would have to wait a minute, huh? I think I would have to move to the left here. Yeah. They would tell stories on how they would have so little uh, food. They would have a lot of rice, but little uh, meat. Or I don't know if they even had meat, veggies or viands. Yeah. So they had to like really uh, be fast. If he didn't eat fast, he didn't eat anything. And sometimes they would ha come up with these like uh, techniques. Like uh, if, w if no one was looking, they would like store some of the foods, some of the meat inside the rice so no one would see. And so they could argue that they haven't had any yet and they can still get more. You know, the, uh, sneaky maneuvers like that. And um, we didn't need to do that already during my time because my parents were, are, are very hardworking and they were able to give us a very good life. But some of the practices carried over in such a way, like, um, let's see. Let me also first look for a stop here. We can stop by Zagreb, actually. Maybe we can stop by here. Although I wouldn't want to go through there. You know what? No, let's stop here. I think we have to stop here, otherwise it will be too off the mark. You know what? I'll make it a cliffhanger. I'll answer that next episode. <laughs> cliffhanger 101. So make sure to, st to stay tuned to the next episode so you can hear the answer. But thank you for riding with me today. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the next episode. I'll be recording it right after this one for sure. So stay tuned, all right? Hey, let's go sleep. And I'll catch you guys in the morning in the next episode. Thanks. Have a nice day. And Clumsy Trucking. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, like button, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell for the notification so you get... Uh, updated when I release the next episode. Thanks and bye bye. Clubsy Trucking.